Hello. Hope everyone is having a wonderful week. Um, see if anyone wants to come and hang out with me today. Um, if you are watching this, please like it. If you catch the replay, like it, check, comment that you're catching the replay. If there are additional questions that you have, let me know. You can message me or you can add a comment to this post um, after the fact. So, yeah, I just, I want to make these as informative as possible. And if there are questions after the fact, let me know. Let me know that you're listening. Let me know um, if there's more things that you want to learn about. And yeah, just kind of give me your questions. Like, let's get healthy and, you know, balance hormones and just be better overall um, in life and hormones, health, metabolic function, everything. So anyways, hopefully I've got a couple people on here. So I'm just going to kind of dive into um, kind of what what's more important. Is it more important for you to look good or feel good? And what is the connection between those two things? So I asked this last week in a post, like, would you rather look good or feel good? Now it's kind of a trick question. Um, because to be honest, like the path to looking good is through feeling good. Um, there's a saying the physical follows the physiological. So what that means is that to get the external look that you want, you have to have internal health. Now there are things that we can do that kind of override that sometimes for short periods of time, but the body is very smart. So if you are trying to force a deficit for too long or force a significant or severe deficit for too long, eventually your body is going to react and it's probably not going to react in the way that you want it to. So, you know, you may be one of those people that are consuming 1,200 calories, which, by the way, no one should ever consume 1,200 calories. Um, even 1,400, I, there's very rare, if ever, that I see or do um, a woman's nutrition and find that she should be under any of those calories. Like, even her BMR, like... 95% of women should be consuming above that BMR wise. And your BMR, by the way, is your base metabolic rate. So that's what it would cost your body to maintain current muscle mass, like detox, organs, brain, like that is the minimum amount of calories that you would need to function. So don't ever consume under your BMR. Now, um, when pursuing goals, it is important to create internal health to see external change. So that means hormonal health, metabolic health, gut health, sleep health, um, like appropriate energy, like your body regulating energy throughout the day on its own without heavy stimulant use, heavy, you know, excessive coffee consumption or, you know, Red Bull, like, energy drinks, um, pre-workouts, like those are all going to be things that are going, like if you are leaning on those things because your energy is not regulating throughout the day, then there is something going on like nutrition wise that we can do to create better awareness for one and get your body in a healthy place because to achieve those aesthetic goals to look good, we have to create health internally. So, um, there was a question in regards to supporting gut health. Now, this is something that is very important in pursuing goals. If your gut health is not where it should be, then that's going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your energy. It's going to affect serotonin production. 95% of your serotonin is actually produced within your gut. So, you know, when we think about the importance of gut health, like that is a, a big important thing in the pursuit of goals. So the question was how to support gut health. Um, basically, let's see, fixing digestive issues. 
So this is going, so ways that you can do this, um, basically implementing, well, working on having a nutrient dense diet. So if you're not getting the nutrients that your body needs to support healthy hormones from, if they're not being absorbed in your gut because your gut is unhealthy, then you are not going to get the benefits from those foods. You are not going to receive the vitamins and minerals that you need to support your hormones. So if you're experiencing um, like constipation, like that could be a reason or that could be one of the things that we can look at to be like, hey, like your body isn't removing the metabolites that it needs to remove to keep your hormones healthy. So if you're not pooping daily, like your body is not detoxing appropriately, basically. So things you can do to improve your ability to detox or basically support digestive health are going to be things like drinking enough water, sleeping, walking, getting daylight. Um, things you can add into your nutrition are things like collagen peptides, bone broth, probiotics, fermented foods, L-glutamine. Make sure you have enough fiber in your diet. So basically just kind of a little very simplified um, process for how your hormones are removed or excess hormones are removed. So things like estrogen metabolites, which are generally where we see problems if those are not removed because they recirculate into the body causing things like estrogen dominance. So basically when hormones are processed and deemed removed or removable or um, the need to remove them because they are in excess. They go through the liver, the liver create, turns them into metabolites, then once they're turned into metabolites, they move through the gut to be removed. So if you are not pooping daily, um, then that is something that could be tied to estrogen dominance in your body or your hormones just not balancing appropriately. So it is important that you consume enough fiber, support detox pathways um, in the process of balancing your hormones. Now, I wanna kinda circle back to the whole look good, feel good thing. So when pursuing aesthetics goals, it is important to create health first. Like a stressed or unhealthy body does not want to lose weight. Like if, if you're already consuming in a deficit, you are already creating stress in your body. So to create a, a steeper deficit or a more severe deficit, your body is going to fight back against you. So for anyone that is watching this that is following like a 1200, 1400, maybe even a 1600 calorie diet, going to the gym all the time, like lots of cardio, like lifting, like doing all the things and wondering why you're not losing weight, like that is what we call metabolic adaptations. So consider metabolic adaptations kind of like with your cell phone. Like when your cell phone goes down to, you know, 20% battery life and you get that notification that's like, hey, do you wanna go into power save mode? That's what your body's doing. Your body is like, hey, we're in a deficit. You're asking me to do a lot of activity and I'm not getting enough charge to maintain all these activities, all these apps that you have open essentially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, go into power save mode. So I'm gonna offload those unnecessary apps for survival. So that means that things like reproductive hormones, like reproduction is not advantageous in a time of extreme deficit. So reproductive hormones will take a back seat. Metabolic function will take a back seat. The desire for your body to hold on to muscle mass takes a back seat. So your body, so muscles are expensive to hold on to. So that goes in the, that whole BMR thing. So muscles are part of that base metabolic rate. But if your body is in a caloric deficit below your BMR, then it's going to offload muscles and it's going to store body fat because muscles are expensive to hold on to and body fat is easy to hold on to. 
So if you are in a place where you've been in a calorie deficit for an extreme or a prolonged period of time, there may be something called metabolic adaptation going on. So basically your body is like your cell phone. It's, you know, dimming screen brightness. It's offloading unnecessary apps, which in the case of our body has to do with hormone function and has to do with metabolic function and offloading muscle mass. So in order to have healthy weight loss and um, kind of returning to health, you have to have an appropriate entry into a diet phase and an appropriate exit. So if you are pursuing weight loss, um, sorry, Anna, can we trust the apps that tell us what amount of calories to take in? No, honestly, um, I would say, Mm, I honestly, I was going to say like nine times out of 10, maybe trust them. But honestly, my fitness pal, I've seen my fitness pal put calories for women so low. And I, we have spent time reversing out of that and creating healthy metabolism for those people. Um, but yeah, it's very rare if ever that I would trust an app to figure out calories because it is such an individualized thing and everybody comes from a different place. So, you know, as a nutrition coach, basically like I'll have someone track what they're currently doing. And then I have an intake form that I figure out where they should be based off of their activity, lifestyle, kind of past history. And then depending on where they are, they are versus where they're at, I adjust them slowly to get where they should be and then watch how their bodies respond. So watch biofeedback to see how somebody's body responds to see when we need to make adjustments and when we're in a healthy spot. Um, that's very quick summarization of that. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't trust the apps and more often than not people put what they want for fat loss and they try and hold on to that and the body generally, there'll be metabolic adaptations, extreme cravings. It becomes very difficult to hold on to that. And most people will try and hold on to those deficits far too long. And the apps never tell you how to appropriately exit from a deficit. They're just like, here you go. Good luck. So anyways, um, yeah, I wouldn't trust the apps. Um, another thing to take into account. So this kind of goes into the whole metabolic adaptation thing. And a lot of times people, when they exit a diet phase, because they don't have an appropriate exit plan, it's kind of like, oh, wheels fall off or, oh, I hit a number, cool, I'm done. And then they just go back to eating all the things that they cut out because they didn't create any sort of balance or sustainability within their diet. Um, so something that occurs is called fat overshooting when someone does that. So basically because they tried to hold on to that deficit for so long, they created those metabolic adaptations. So now they have this slower metabolism, they've got less muscle mass, their hormones are probably downregulated a little bit, and then they just go back to eating all these things. So the body during a period of starvation, it's not like you're not starving, like you've got your refrigerator, but your body doesn't know that. So your body views this as, you know, a famine period in time. So basically your body is going to work to prevent future incidents of this occurring. So as you're losing fat, your body is making some additional fat cells because when the feast time of the year occurs, it's going to refill all the fat cells that it depleted during that starvation period or that famine period. And it's going to add more fat to the cells that it added during that famine period. So that's where we see the case of people um, gaining the weight they lost plus some because the body is working to prevent future famine state from affecting your health or your ability to survive. So things to remember, like the body's priority is to survive, thrive, and procreate. So if those something is threatened in that, then it's going to make its own accommodations to protect survival. 
So that turned into a little bit more than what I planned on talking about today, but I think it was all really good. Um, does anybody listening have any questions or anybody that catches the replay, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, point here to look good. You must feel good. Um, if anybody has any questions about this, just let me know. Otherwise, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your week and yeah, reach out if you need anything. Talk to you soon.